With passion, pray. With passion, make love. With passion, eat and drink and dance and play. Why look like a dead fish in this ocean of God? Shobhita is asking, what passion is? The last line must reveal it to you. Passion is to not to feel as if you are an outsider. Passion is to not to feel that you are thirsty. Passion is to not to believe that you have to reach somewhere. Passion is an inner fullness. When you play with that inner fullness, you play to play, not to win. When you make love with that inner fullness, you make love to make love, not to feel satisfied or not to impress. When you eat and drink with that inner fullness, then you eat and drink to eat and drink, not to become somebody else. Passion is the thing that the mind has for the truth. What is that thing? That thing is, it cannot be far away. It is mine. Wherever I might be, the truth is my destiny. This is passion. Hmm? You are passionate about something when you can not only not do without it, but you also know that there is complete security, so you will never need to do without it. Passion means not only is something very, very dear to you, it is also assured that your dear thing is never going to be taken away from you. The relationship between the fish and the ocean can be summarized in two sentences. One, the fish loves the ocean. Second, the fish is inseparable from the ocean. It is not necessary that both these conditions are met for everybody and always. You may find yourself in a situation where you find that the one that you are with is not lovable. That is what often happens to those who are stuck up in the world, caught in relationships. You find you are with somebody, but there is no love there. Conversely, it is also possible that you find that you love, but the object of your love is either unattainable or only temporarily yours. None of these two are applicable with respect to the relationship of the fish and the ocean. The fish loves the ocean. That love is absolute. Second, the fish knows that it cannot be separated from the ocean. That security is absolute. Do you see what passion is? And do you see why passion makes one go ecstatic? Firstly, I love someone. Secondly, my love is totally secure. 
and i repeat that in our case it is not necessary that both these conditions are met usually we find it difficult to love and if we do love then it is not necessary that the love has a secure base i'll come back to the two conditions what was condition number 1 there must be love what was condition number 2 the love must be secure in our case even the first condition is unlikely to be always met love is not there love is a rarity hmm? and if love is there our love is always vulnerable it needs all kinds of defenses and protection it can be snatched away or killed at any time passion is the fullness of joy when you know that that which really really pulls you and captivates you is within your reach do you see the euphoric feel of passion one i am in love second my beloved is secured firstly i am in love that itself is a rarity that itself is bliss second my beloved is well within my reach and always within my reach so there is security that is passion i want to run towards my beloved and i know i can run and i know i can reach that is passion now how would you run what would be the quality of your steps joyful energetic and poetic at the same time passion is energy meeting poetry Hmm? both these must be simultaneously fulfilled we have a lot of examples where either none of them is fulfilled or only one is fulfilled it is possible to love and yet be cynical it is possible to deeply love and yet feel that your love is going to remain unanswered that your love is going to remain unfulfilled because the one that you love is beyond your reach and if god and truth are the one you love then it is very easy to dismiss your chances of ever reaching them you will say i am a body and god is bodiless how will the body ever reach the bodiless you will say i am limited and god is limitless infinite how will i ever reach him you will say i am so imperfect and god is total perfection how will i ever reach him so it is very very possible that you love and yet are very hopeless about your love then you won't be passionate then your love would rather be a drag you would all the time be singing sad songs have you seen those plays and movies where the protagonist is deeply in love but at the same time his love is doomed to fail the one he loves can for some tragic reason never belong to him we have so many tragic love stories right that is not passion that is not passion in passion you must love and you must also know that come what may 
I belong to my love. My love belongs to me. There can be no mishap. There is a total assurance. If that total assurance is not there, then your love would rather become a load upon your mind. Then your love will become your own misfortune. Then you will curse the day you fell in love. Then you will say, you would have been better had you not loved. You would meet many such people. A lot of poets only write poetry of frustration. They, in fact, literally curse the day when they saw that particular man or woman and were enamored. They say that was the day of the beginning of my ruin. No, no, that is not passion. That is rather poison. Hmm? To really live in a centered way and to really live in a way where is abundance, ebullience, an unhindered flow, you must have both. Attraction towards the truth. And a certainty that you will reach there. Always be certain that you will reach there. You are destined to reach there. In fact, be so sure that you will reach there that know that you are already there. Because if you say I will reach there, but there is some distance then there still remains a faint chance that you may not reach. After all, distance is still there. And who knows what may happen in the course of the distance. Life is unpredictable. There might be robbers along the way. You may meet an accident. You have to be so certain that you will reach the destination that you feel like saying, I am at the destination. Then there is passion. Hmm? Passion is the exuberance of living. Passion is when you are in so intimate contact with the total that your cup starts overflowing. Your cup is little and the total is great. So your cup has to overflow. Passion is that overflow. Hmm? Your mind just cannot contain the joy that it has been blessed with. So joy is just dripping over, flowing over and you are totally wet. That wetness is passion. Hmm? Mind you, such passion is not mere excitement because that excitement which we normally experience does not last. It is an excitement that drains out our energy and then itself gets drained out. If you remain excited for any period more than an hour, then you have chances of a physical problem. If you remain too excited, you may get a heart attack. That is the quality of our day-to-day -day normal excitement. So passion is not comparable to a normal state of excitement. Passion is deeper. Excitement doesn't last. And that is why we find excitement so valuable because it is rare. For 30 minutes in a day, you can remain excited. And then you say, my passion is to, let's say, run or cook <coughs> or write or play the drum. But tell me, for how long in the day can you run or write or cook or play the drum? 
for how long in the day will you run let's say 2 hours 4 hours not not even that much for how long in the day will you cook for how long in the day will you write poetry for how long in the day will you play drum or flute or anything else so passion cannot be activity centric but you usually find people saying i am passionate about this i am passionate about that we relate passion to an object sometimes even to a person you say i am passionate about meeting somebody now that somebody will always not be the same in your eyes if today you are passionate about meeting him tomorrow that passion will drop that doesn't mean that the person will drop out from your life the person may still remain but the passion may sink excitement is only there when there is a rarity only when there is a beginning when something becomes regular and known then passion drops this is the quality of our so called passion the passion that rumi is referring to is not such passion the passion that rumi is referring to is a passion in which the object is infinite and hence the energy associated with that passion is also infinite if the object if your passion is a limited being then your passion is also going to be limited 30 minutes a day for 30 days full stop but if you are passionate towards the truth then your passion will be everlasting then it will show up in everything do, that you do if you are passionate about playing the drum then the moment the drumming stops your passion will also drop that is what happens when you say that you are passionate about something x then everything that is not x only sees a like a cycle a disinterested face of yours you don't have any verb there you look drowsy in fact after you are freshly done with your bout of passion you look the most drowsy you have played the drum for 2 hours now your passion is exhausted what do you want to do now sleep the height of passion is gone falling from the crest now there is only the trough you are at the mountain peak now you are in the valley you want to sleep but look at what rumi is saying rumi is saying eat with passion drink with passion make love with passion pray with passion which means passion has to be all pervasive passion has to be 24 hours passion has to be there in every activity this passion cannot be there in every activity if it is object specific hmm hence it has to be only towards the truth when you are passionate towards the truth then there is passion in everything that you do and that passion is not merely an overflow of energy that passion is not merely a periodic excitement that passion is much more than that sit with passion sleep with passion wake with passion let passion be the environment in which you do anything hmm? sleep with passion now what does this passion have to do with energy it is something else it's a quality 
It's a way of living. Rise with passion. Fall with passion. Up with passion. Down with passion. Speak with passion. Listen with passion. Meet with passion. Depart with passion. Win with passion. Lose with passion. Build with passion. Demolish with passion. If you are passionate only about building, then demolishing will demolish you. You have to be just passionate. Then you are passionate about both building and destroying. Now that's nine. With great passion, you are destroying everything that you yourself built. Nice. Kiss with passion. Kill with passion. Hmm? Heal with passion. Hit with passion. Come close with passion. Break apart with passion. You will then be able to say, I have just had a very passionate breakup. They will wonder, what does that mean? They will never know. Most people never know anything anyway. So when Rumi talks about his passionate verses or this love, why we tend to relate our experience of our so-called Rumi love and all that? So why or is it different or we are trying to hold around it? But no, it is not different. It is just much more than worldly love. What Rumi is talking about is surely applicable to your worldly love as well. But it is not limited to worldly love. When Rumi says love passionately, that includes the love that you make to your wife. But that is not limited to loving your wife. Rumi says live passionately. And life does include Gamut of all your relationships. It's a totality, right? So you can indeed mean Rumi's words to imply that you should have a passionate relationship with your wife. But Rumi is saying have a passionate relationship with your wife and your dog and the tree in your courtyard. So it is not limited to one object. Passion is the total environment in which you live. When the wind blows, 
it caresses every leaf the touch of the wind is not reserved for a single leaf that is passion everything is touched and caressed when the sun shines everything is illuminated the sun does not say here that one is my favorite house i will illumine that particular one only to be passionate is to illuminate everything to be passionate is to caress every face you come across is to greet every person you come across Today we have been very much. Not only did we meet the artists, but even when that waiter uh, was there, he was also, and he was also very really more than. If you want to see the lack of passion just see how you are after your bout of passion just see how you are after the party has just finished then you will see what is meant by lack of passion our passion is very dualistic we reserve our energy for specific people and occasions and if you want to see a total lack of energy see how we we are after that occasion after a very passionate weekend look at your face on a monday morning after spending a few passionate hours with your girlfriend look at your face at the time of farewell yes passion is love and security taken together that security is faith hmm i have faith that i will never lose my beloved i love deeply and i have faith that i will never lose my beloved when both these things are together that is passion relaxation of course relaxation and not just a resigned relaxation assured it is a celebratory relaxation you are relaxing at the summit you are relaxing at the destination like a winner like a winner so you have great ebullience as we just said there is so much that your mind can't even contain it it's overflowing this 
exclusion was in the hall that she was in. Yeah. Yeah. Dhyan to me is the same thing. Dhyan is attention. Attention is to attend to the truth. In passion too, you are attending only to the truth. But passion has an added quality. You are not only attending to the truth, you are also assured about the truth. You know that you are not fighting a losing battle. You know that the battle is already won. You see, you can be very valiant and you can very energetically fight a losing battle also. But that will not have the quality that Rumi is referring to as passion. Passion is when you are fighting the battle and you know in advance that the battle is already <coughs> won. You cannot lose it. Now you fight it with passion. You know two things parallelly. One, the battle is for something invaluable. The battle is for your beloved. And second, you also know that you cannot lose this battle. Now you fight with abandon. Now you fight with all that you have. Now you fight without inhibition. That is passion. If you love, but you are not touched for reaching for some goal or you can touch the I would say the insecure of the heart possessing your teaching, can you be in passion? If you if your goal is small, you can never be secure. The smaller your beloved object is, the more unreliable would it be. When the small cannot even belong to itself, in the sense that it has no mastery of itself, how can then the small belong to you. The small is always susceptible to the vicissitudes of time, situation, coincidence. Hence the small is never reliable. Today the small may claim that it belongs totally to you tomorrow it will back off. Today what seems like a flourish will tomorrow become a withering. The only way then to remain assured about your love is to love the grand, the big, the regal. If you love anything less than the biggest, then you will always live in fear about losing your love. The smaller the object of your love is, the more fickle would be the relationship. It would be very moody. It would be full of ups and downs. And ultimately it will collapse. Even if it does not collapse, it will keep you annoyed and anxious always. And that is as bad as a collapse. In matters of love, make sure 
that nothing less than a himalayan bigness attracts you don't fall for the petty you will find that your life is being spent in petty affairs avoid the petty as much as possible with the petty there can be no passion with the petty there would only be pettiness passion and fullness are inseparable passion and bigness are inseparable don't try to be passionate about something little i am passionate about cooking sambar i am passionate about brushing my teeth people are passionate about strange things i am passionate about cleaning my left ear don't be passionate about the little the little is so little that it won't be able to take the weight of your passion if you are too passionate about cleaning your left ear chances are very soon you will lose your hearing <coughs> your le- your little left ear won't be able to bear the weight of your passion either your passion will be exhausted or your ear will be exhausted I once met a fellow who was very passionate about cleaning his tongue. Some amongst us might be passionate about monkeys. That is not good news. neither for you nor for the monkeys be passionate about the large and that that does not mean a gorilla i hope the ladies and gentlemen here will understand that by largeness i do not mean dimensions of limited objects i am not referring to size i am referring to another quality the quality of immensity the quality of immeasurability otherwise you will start being passionate about a maharaja dosa it is quite large so you have graduated from sambar to maharaja dosa that will only give you some fat <laughs> 